Matt Hall of Kingston Online, joined by Derek Young, also of Kingston Online, here inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium after K State drops a 31 12 decision to Baylor to fall to 3 2 on the season, 0 oh 2 in Big 12 play. Derek, let's talk first before we go drive by drive and look at the scores of this game in segment one of the KSO Sunday show. Let's talk first big picture and what you thought of the Wildcats today. Let's start offense first to that side of the ball. Offense is still kind of sputtering, still. Still finding their issues. They get when they're off schedule. They then it throws them all out of whack, and they're not moving the ball as efficiently as what we saw in the first two games. Then on top of that, second down, they're running into issues, especially second and short. And short yeah. yardage situations in general kind of spooked them against Oklahoma State, and did, did the same thing today. Defense it seems like it survives for a half of kind of the offense putting them in tough situations, and then once you get later in the third quarter, the dam starts to break, and you see explosive plays from the other team, specifically on the ground, both in Stillwater and then today. We'll talk a lot more big picture stuff when we get to segment three of this show, but I do want to ask you, we saw K-State losing to Stillwater at Oklahoma State last week, then of course today to Baylor. Did these losses feel similar to you? Did you see the same issues, or do you feel different about these two leaving these two contests? They felt the same to me. You could almost replay last week's game, and it probably look pretty similar to this one and uh, in terms of you know the struggles that they had the struggles are still there you, you, at some point you begin to wonder if it's more of a personnel standpoint and when it comes to some of those issues and and you do at least regardless of the personnel want to see improvement game to game um, over the course of the season so that's something to look for at least the rest of the year to see if they can uh, combat some of those mistakes and errors that are kind of haunting them in both games but you see uh, some of the same decision making from the coaches in certain situations, which is the trend that shows how they want to uh, approach that uh, certain situations. And then the, the want to be more consistent. And I think that's more along the lines of them knowing that they can't be explosive. Yeah, exactly. Let's go drive by drive. Look at the scoring plays for both teams here on the KSO Sunday show, which, of course, is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, before I get into the, into the scoring plays, Malik Doles, as you had suggested to us on at least the final walkthrough this morning, on the foundation, did play it today, did start. He was targeted on K-State's first four pass attempts, made, a, made at least, I think, one reception, if not two. That was knocked out of the game. We didn't see his return. Co Coach Chris Kleiman didn't have much to offer after the game as far as injury updates on him. So, one, were you surprised to see Knowles play? And then, two, what's your concern now seeing him leave the field again so quickly? Wasn't surprised because I think that's something that we've heard kind of since Tuesday or Wednesday that it was working toward that. He, I know that he was medically cleared. He was viewed as a game-time decision today, saw him suit up. He played the first possession. Uh, I think he played a little bit of the second possession. Yep. Either way, every pass, the, the two possessions that they, that he was involved in, they all went to him. And that kind of shows you the importance of him in the lineup and just what kind of difference he makes because he is consistently open and consistently is the guy that they at least rely on quite a bit just despite him being a redshirt freshman. And then seeing him leave just after two possessions, and I'm not sure – that he even trotted back out on the field from being in the locker room. So yeah. uh, that's probably a concern of mine that he didn't even come back out. Now he didn't come back out well, you know, with any assistance, so maybe he's going to be fine. But obviously uh, missing a game and then the following game, leaving a game injured, you wonder if he didn't re-aggravate it and if he's going to miss on time on top of that. Yep, you can't help but be curious about that. That's something we'll monitor for sure going forward. Another piece of injury news you shared on, on the foundation this morning was that Jordan Brown would not play in this game, and you were correct. He did not. He did not even dress. Uh, I asked Chris Kleiman about him after the game, and he said it would be at least a few weeks. So, Derek, the first points do come from K-State on a 31-yard Blake Lynch field goal that, case, that gives K-State a 3 nothing lead with just two minutes left in the first quarter. That drive, 10 plays, 60 yards. They had no Brown. They had no Knowles in that drive, but the Wildcats did put some stuff together between the 20s, of course, and move the ball in the first their first scoring drive of the game to go up 3 nothing with a couple minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah, that wasn't the only drive where it seemed that they got into a rhythm at some point, but uh, – and probably from what they said, a lack of consistency is what halted a few of those. So it comes down to not finishing them. But they moved the ball in between the 20s. And, yep. and ironically, Skylar Taunton threw a career high in terms of single game today. He absolutely did, yeah. I think the career high was, what, 213 coming in. He threw for 218 today against, uh, against Baylor. Baylor does answer not long after that. 14-27 left in the second quarter. A 36-yard field goal from John Mayers. Uh, eight plays, 57 yards, 244 off the clock. Ties it at 3-3. Three to three. Still like K-State's chances, I'm sure, at this point. Uh, Derek, the next touchdown, though, or the next score is a touchdown from Baylor. It is Tyquan Thornton who made back-to-back -back catches that looked virtually identical. He had a 27-yard completion to pick up a first down to the 29. Then the next play he scored from 29 yards out from Charlie Brewer. Now it's 10-3 Baylor with 638 left in the first half, Derek. 
Yeah, that that play or that drive was more about the explosion through the offense. Uh, they're passing the ball, but as it got a later in the game, they started to leak out rushing the ball. And uh, the, the field goal by John Mayers was a guy that's also recruited by Kansas State and Sean Snyder at one point. But you still feel like you're in the game, and probably no despite being down ten to three, I thought K State outplayed Baylor up until that point. I wouldn't disagree with that. So, you, like you said, ten three at that point. We don't have a lot of clips to show you for this, but we will bring up K-State does have a fourth and six at the 37 of Baylor with a couple minutes left in the first half. They do punt it away. They actually get a great effort the first time and down it at the one. It gets called back due to kind of a confusing penalty. Um, and then K-State only gets to the 21. So they only get 16 yards there. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but now you've seen K-State later in this game. They pass on a touchdown, try to kick a field goal when they need three scores to get back in the game. Is K-State being too conservative, or is it too early for us to draw these conclusions about this team right now, Derek? Uh, I'll probably play the, the conservative person and say it's probably somewhere in the middle. And yeah. it didn't, uh, I guess, aggravate me as much as what I saw last week against Oklahoma State because this was kind of so early in the game. and the, the, Still just 10-3 at that point. Still 10-3, just the second quarter. And you were still, I think people, both teams, I think were still tr trying to figure out the wind and how it was going to alter and change things. Now, you, hindsight's 20-20, but then you look at Baylor scored – uh, twice later in the game off a of 90 plus yard drives yeah. so that probably if they knew that that was going to happen of course they probably go for it in that situation no doubt about it and, and actually that touchdown drive from Baylor you know that made it 10-3 was a six play 98 yard drive so yeah, K-State to their credit did choose to try to back Baylor up after they just went 98 for a touchdown on them the next Baylor touchdown as Derek referenced is another 90 yard drive six plays again 91 yards is 209 John Lovett breaks a number of tackles, bursts in there from 13 yards out. Now Baylor's up 17-3. There's still 12 minutes left in the third quarter, but K-State's started to slow down on offense enough to this point where I think it's going to be difficult to get back into it. Down 17-6 with 11:27 left in the third quarter, D.Y. Yeah, as we were watching, I think I said even at, at that point, or maybe it was a hair uh, later than that, that for K-State to have a chance, they were probably going to have to score a touchdown from – uh, phase of the game that wasn't the offense. It was going to have to be a right. non-offensive touchdown, whether it came from a special teams like Malik Knowles did against Mississippi State or whether it came from the defense. Because when you're struggling to find ways to score uh, and only moving the ball within the, the 20s and 30s and you're limited in what you could probably call as a play caller, uh, that's why sometimes I try to revert from criticizing the coaches too much because their offense is so limited in terms right. of uh, playmakers and, and true difference makers that – they have to be consistent to have these methodical 10, 11, 12 uh, play drives. And th that's just tough to do without, you know, an ab just an absurd amount of efficiency, an absurd amount of consistency. So there's not a whole lot to call. That's why you need difference makers. You just need a sudden change play. And they're probably going to have to get that this year from the defense and special teams, at least to how their team is composed now. That's how it feels. You know, we don't get any points from either team for over 10 minutes. As like I said, 11:27 left there when Baylor goes up 17 to three. K State is the next to score. They make it 17-6 with 21 seconds to, uh, still left to play in the third quarter. This is a Blake Lynch 29-yard 29 29-yard field goal to cap off a 12-play 61-yard drive that took 6:24 off the clock. So, if I was going to nitpick one, this would be the one. You're down 17-3. That's 14 points. That's a two-score game. You're at the 22nd mark, and th you're basically in the fourth quarter down two scores. And for the second week in a row, they take a field goal that doesn't change it, you know, to a two any better than a two score game. They're still down 11. To be fair, it doesn't matter because Baylor goes on to score 31 and carries it out here. But I think K State's going to have to be more aggressive at times. This was a good drive, though, Derek. Right. Like I said 12 plays, 61 yards, 624 off the clock. But again, they just couldn't find enough plays and consistency, like you were talking about, to cap off the drive with a touchdown. Yeah, I don't know if if you're probably getting into a situation where you wonder if they're showing a little too much confidence in the offense that there's probably, you know, you know, plenty of amount of time left that we can, you know, surpass that 17 or maybe even that 24. But th as they continue to learn about their team and what they can do and what they can't do, and, and it's easy for a coach of that probably to be confident in their own guys. The more they find out, maybe the, the less we see those kinds of decisions we'll, because at some point, because they're so limited, I think they're going to need to be more aggressive. I just don't know if they've reached that conclusion themselves yet. Right. I think the backbreaker comes with 10:34 left, a little over 10:34 left, actually in the third quarter. 10:34 in the fourth quarter is when Jerry Bahannon scores from four yards out. The backup Baylor quarterback of Charlie Brewer is dinged. Derek on that drive, there's a really big play. K State again, only down 17-6. You know, so still in this game, they have a third and 22 forced after an intentional grounding call, I believe it was. No, offensive pass interference on Baylor. Baylor throws a little 10-yard swing pass, not a swing pass, but a 10-yard check down out to a receiver. He breaks a number of tackles, gets the first down. Baylor scores the next play. That was the backbreaker.
backbreaker, Derek. That was the backbreaker. Also, something that I, call, I called it the nail in the coffin during uh, 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 in four downs as well, and, and not just because you know the, the separation on the scoreboard that it created, but just the manner of how that play kind of unfolded. Because despite the loss to Oklahoma State. Uh, they grinded out that win against Mississippi State. Like nothing had really been truly disappointing from uh, just what you saw on the field. Everything looked, even up to that point, I think uh, you know better than what we saw last year. Yeah. But that that play kind of reminded me a little bit of last year, where it's really a simple play to make. It's an easy play to make, and they just flubbed it so much. K State does score. It's only touchdown of the game. Two answer. Uh, it's a five yard Dalton Schoen reception from Skylar Thompson. Dalton Schoen again today. I uh, thought made a number of really nice plays, even a, a 50 50 ball on the sideline. He had six catches for 69 yards and a touchdown. Phillip Brooks, actually the leading receiver, with seven catches for 69 yards, no touchdowns for Phillip Brooks. So that makes it 24 12. I like K State's decision to go for two and try to cut it to a 10 point game there. They don't get it. I think it was still the right thing. Baylor comes back and answers. One more time with a John Lovett 46-yard touchdown run. That would provide the final score of 31-12, to Derek. We're going to come back in segment two and hear from Chris Kleiman. We'll get Derek back in segment three to talk some big picture stuff on the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Uh, you know, you know, 14 of those points uh, came in the fourth quarter, so that's just something we have to buckle down on, just finishing the game, you know, playing for all four quarters, not, you know, three quarters or three and a half quarters. And, um, you know, like I said, we just got to fix our tiny mistakes and, uh, you know, just get better at tackling, of course. And uh, you know, just you know, just keep filling our keep filling our gaps, uh, playing our schemes, because you know, um, in, my, in my opinion, you know, this isn't anything on the coaches at all. This is all players' um, faults for you know giving up so many points and you know not being able to get in the end zone from the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. I'm shouldering a lot of it. You know, yeah. my position playing quarterback, I'm, I'm taking ownership and everything. You know, if you want to blame a loss, you can blame it on me. You know, I threw an interception, I fumbled the ball. You know, like I I could have played better. Like that's just my fault. Like, and I can handle that. Like that's that's the deal. Is is I want that that ownership. Like put it on me, and um, I'll I'll carry that. I'll I'll handle that. And. Um, take you know, take this weight off this team. You know, I feel like there's a lot of you know, just comp compressed stuff going on. Just you know, and then I can, I can handle it. That's the thing. Is I've been been on this road. Like I've had people tell me, you know, I'm the worst quarterback ever, and I'm the best quarterback ever. You know, it's like, man, like I'm, I have been down the road. I understand how it goes when everything's going great. People love you when everything is not going great. People hate you. Like, that's just, that's how it goes. Um, and, you know, I've been fortunate to have some experience and, um, and been around the block a couple times and that stuff doesn't faze me, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be fine. Um, and we're, this team's going to be fine. I promise. Like, I'm, we just got to figure things out. Like, nobody said this was going to be easy. We got a whole, everything's, you know, this is new. You know, there's a lot of great things that have, that have came, that have came this season and hit a little bump, like, man, that's just that's part of it, you know, it's, nobody said it was going to be smooth sailing all season, like, you know what I'm saying, so, um, I understand, like, that's hard for some people to um, understand and, um, you know, whatnot, but, you know, this team's not shaking, this coach is not shaking, we keep, they believe in us, I believe in them, we believe in them, and, and truly, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I mean, I think it's anger, disappointment, kind of a mixture of them all, um, it's just tough um, in college football when you prepare for a whole week and you yeah. go out and play a game and you don't play your best game um, as a team or as a person. Um, so it's just, it's tough, um, especially when you got to go back and watch film of it. You know, you got to see us not playing a very good game on film and get the corrections from that, make those corrections, and then kind of, I guess, wipe it and move forward. But yeah, it's definitely a mixture of anger and disappointment. I mean, it's tough anytime you go out and don't play the way you want to. Uh, I don't want to say it hurts our confidence because, you know, I think we're all confident in our ability and, you know, what we should be able to do, but it just comes down to, you know, going out there and executing. Well, you know, the main thing, you know, especially being a part of a team, you know, you just have to take ownership when something goes wrong. And, uh, you know, like I say, you, no one has to worry about the coaches because they're taking full ownership for what they've done and what they're doing. And, you know, everything they do is, you know, for the best interest of, of us as players. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a good team goes off with the players, you know, take ownership and uh, have accountability towards towards ourselves and towards each other. Matt Hall of Case on the Line back here for segment two of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Like we've done the last few weeks, I think the best way we can do this segment is let you watch Chris Kleiman speak. Coach Kleiman was not as happy after this week's loss as he appeared to be keeping it together last week. Not thrilled with K-State's tackling against Baylor or performance as a whole. 
Well, that was a, d a disappointing uh, loss for us. Um, Congratulations to Baylor. They got a good football team, a tremendous quarterback, and a defense that uh, really is fast. And there's a reason why they're five and zero and, and playing at a high level. We uh, told the guys we we're, we're going to be good, but we've got to fix some problems and we've got to fix some issues that uh, uh, have crept up the last couple of weeks. And um, you know we we have it in front of us. There's tons to play for, and uh, uh, in front of us is our job to do the right thing. And the one thing that uh, um, we have to do is stay together. That's the first thing. We've got a bunch of seniors in there that uh, I think uh, I know want to be great, and uh, I'm going to challenge those guys to make sure that uh, we keep moving forward. Obviously, you look offensively, we've got to be able to sustain drives. We had some, some good plays, but not enough sustained drives together. Uh, and um, defensively, uh, we have to tackle better. It, it was um, uh, an awful display uh, of tackling uh, downfield, and um, we gave them a couple of scores um, because either we missed the cup and, and didn't fit it right or uh, they bounce off us and that's something that we've been emphasizing and talking about is not block tackling and wrapping up and it's something we've, we're going to get corrected. So we'll open it up for questions. How devastating was the 98 yard scoring drive and then the 91 yard scoring drive that Yeah, the 98 one was the, was the big one because Devin does a great job of pinning them down in a field position game and it's 3-3 three to three and both defenses are playing well and uh, and lo and behold, they, they make a couple of plays. We, we, we miss a tackle, and the kid goes for about 29, and, and that, that hurt. And then the, they ran a double move. And, um, you know, that was a good job by those guys. Obviously a poor, poor job by us uh, not getting a critical stop, whether it's, it's 10 to 3 rather than it's 3 to 3. And potentially if we go 3 and out, 5 and out, um, we got the ball at midfield. But we didn't, and uh, that was a big, big drive, big series. Well, A, we've, we've still got to be able to run the football. I mean, that's, that's what we have to be able to do. We can't have Skyler back there throwing it, it 50 times a game. And, and uh, you know, he threw it 34. We'd rather have him in the 25 to 30 range. But we have to be able to sustain some things running the football, um, wherever it may be. Uh, and, you know, Malik tried to go today, um, wasn't able to go uh, after a series or two. I, I appreciate the, the young man because, you know, he wanted to play for his, for his brothers and stuff, and he, he couldn't do some things. Uh, Philip did some good things, um, but we've got to have, um, you know, more production uh, as a whole offensively, and something that we'll continue to work on. Um, you mentioned the league. I know it's early, but I'm curious if you had any understanding of uh, his prognosis going forward, and then Jordan Brown. Uh, yeah, uh, don't have anything on Malik, and Jordan's probably a few weeks injury. How much has the, the confidence of the offense been hurt now for the last few weeks? Um, well, you're always going to be hurt a little bit just because you, you want to be successful. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you have to keep powering through it. You have to keep finding ways to, to matriculate some offense. And I thought we did a better job today than we did last week. Once again, we just weren't able to sustain it. But uh, uh, we've got a winner that's a quarterback. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of seniors in the offensive line that we've got to continue to challenge, and, and, and we'll get it flipped. Um, probably a combination of, of a number of things. Not necessarily the three-man front, but more blitzes um, people are running against us. Um, and I, I thought early on they were blitzing the heck out of us, and we did a really good job. Skyler did of checking off to a lot of quick, quick throws and quick hitches, and those were good. And then they kept the blitzes on, but they rolled their coverage, which took a few things away. Uh, but, uh, uh, no, we have – a really good plan for the three down. We just didn't execute the plan, and it's something we have to continue to get better at. Some of those obviously were late. We're trying to make some plays, but uh, we we can't have those. I mean, we have a, you know, I think a third and one coming right out of the second half, and it's you know, it's what is a one score game, and, and they stuff us and they go down and, and score. That was because we'd move the ball, and then we get a third and one and lose two and. Um, you know, we have to be able to sustain those drives. We have six possessions in the second half. Five of them end up in uh, Baylor territory and just one touchdown. What seems to be the thing with your offense maybe holding them back? From just, cons just consistency. That's bottom line. We just got to be more consistent on offense. When, when the team loses two in a row, are you seeing any dip in confidence? 
Like I said, you, you, that's human nature. Um, but that's our jobs as coaches to, to get them back and the jobs of seniors. You know, we all are accountable. We all have to be better. It starts with me. And, and I've got to be better um, and, and make sure and push the right buttons. And the seniors have to uh, be better. Everybody's got to uh, get invested a little bit more so that um, we can get this thing turned. And, and once again, we're going to get it turned. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're three and two. Um, we have a bye week, probably not at a great time, but we have the bye week, so we've got to utilize it and get better. Coach, during the week you mentioned that um, you know, with every, every new system, there's going to be um, some adjustments that need to be made, uh, mm -hmm. um, especially on the offensive line. Um, with five seniors up front, I guess how disappointing is it that they haven't seen that? Well, we saw it a little bit better today, but... Um, you know, we can't put it all on those guys. Um, you know, we, th those guys are, are playing their butts off. We just got to continue to improve and um, give, them some, give them some better options maybe in, in whatever it is offensively, um, play calling and those things. And I'm not questioning the play calling. Don't, don't start that with mess. We just have to find some ways that they feel some confidence. And we, I thought, you know, we, in the second half, we had some confidence running the football. Um, once again, we just couldn't sustain it. I don't let nothing. This is a new season, new new stuff, and let's focus on K State. Is this in hindsight like, any regret to not be more aggressive on fourth down? A couple of instances of field goal. And yeah, we it, once again, it's all the feel, all the flow of it, and and um, you know you're fourth and three, fourth and four, and um, you, you're not r running the football exceptionally well. Um, you know, I wanted to try to keep the game as close as we could to give us a chance in the fourth quarter, uh, and uh, so that's kind of why we did it. Are you trying to stay away from running Skyler very much? Because the, time, the times you have run him, mm -hmm. it has worked. But are you kind of yeah, we're picking and choosing our spots. Um, you know, we had a couple of draws for him and stuff, but um, you know, we, we're trying to eliminate some of the shots on the guy uh, without question, and and. Uh, some of the reads are give reads. Um, some of the jet stuff we run are more give reads uh, on the perimeter and not keep reads. So some of that's it's a called potential quarterback run. I thought he did a really good job for a freshman. We got Josh involved. We got Joe Irvin involved. We got Chris Heron involved. We're trying to uh, find a few more playmakers, and um, you know those guys. Made some plays, probably made some mistakes, but uh, they're they're making them fast and um, good chance in the open week for us to continue to try to um, find some guys that can give us some production. Last, last season, and I'm talking about last season uh, at K State, um, one of the issues was his passing touchdowns. Yep. K State didn't get the ball in the end zone with the pass very often. What what's been the struggles there right now that you've been able to identify? Consistency, you know. That, that's the biggest thing. Um, I don't know what happened last year, um, but this year we just we just have to be more consistent, uh, especially in the red zone. Skyler seems to be taking a lot of hits. You know, also took six sacks tonight. In what yep. ways can you find to uh, protect him a little? Bit? Well, he's such a competitor that he's he's you know he's trying to always make a play, and that's one of the things I love about Skyler is is uh, he's a competitor, wants to make plays, and. Um, you know, sometimes maybe it'd be better to just throw it away. And those are things that, you know, um, as an older guy, you want to make sure and find a way to keep it alive. But, uh, um, you know, running the ball will start, for starters, will help us. And, and um, you know, maybe not getting into some of the third and longs that we were in. I was a little frustrated, yeah. You know, that's part of the reason why we went with Joe a little bit more. Um, because uh, I know he got a couple of them back, but... Uh, um, it's something that uh, we have to be able to shore up and and because uh, we we can't afford to to turn the football over without question I think it's are there cut back lines and your running backs did a better job of seeing the yeah potentially you know without just naked eye potentially we did I thought they ran hard and I thought there were some seams in there but um, you know without having the video in front of me I'm not quite sure Last one. back to back losses heading yep. to 
Just, just keep improving. Keep tackling better on defense. Probably go a little bit more ones versus ones and uh, keep working on getting open in, in coverage and keep working on uh, everything. There's nothing that we're not going to work on. There's nothing that we're, we ha can improve on and, and we have to get better without a doubt. Uh, you know, it's obviously just a little bit of a shock, you know. Um, you know, I just kind of feel like, you know, the whole, you know, team overall really isn't playing, uh, you know, up to our ability. Uh, you know, I think we look like a completely different team uh, this week and last week compared to, you know, week three against Mississippi State or even against, you know, week one and two, you know, with the, uh, you know, energy and enthusiasm we had. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on right now, but, you know, I think we're going to get it fixed. A lot of my punts, I was saying, okay, just well, our defense is in good spots. We'll be able to be able to get a good stop here, but it just didn't happen today. I mean, I know we'll go back and we'll try and figure out what we can do. I mean, we've got a bye week here, so we've got yeah. two weeks until we have TCU. So that's a really good thing. And then, um, we looked really good on special teams today, too. Right. I mean, everybody, everything looked really clean. I mean, bouncing back from last week. I hate losing. Any, anytime I lose, I'm not happy and I'm frustrated. So uh, it. Um, I, I felt like um, as an offense, we moved the ball today, which um, compared to last week, you know, like that was a, a positive. We moved the ball. We got first down. We moved the chains. We just would hit a road bump or some penalty or sack or something that would just kind of take us out of a drive. Um, and that was the frustrating aspect. Um, but, I mean, I uh, – you know, there's nobody that – I'm a competitor. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying – do everything I can to win, you know, like I'm I'm playing my hardest, I'm doing everything I possibly can. Like I understand I'm making mistakes and not playing perfect, but I mean, you t tell me somebody who's ever played a perfect football game, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best and I'm going to can continue to grow and learn from my mistakes uh, and just keep get, get, getting better, you know. Uh, that, that's all I can do. I can't look in the past and dwell on it. I can only learn from it, so that's all I'm going to do. Derek and Matt back with you for the third and final segment of today's KSO Sunday show, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, we've talked about this game quite a bit already. We'll back off, talk big picture. K-State's 3-2, and 0-2 oh in the Big 12, heading into another bye week. I think most people, I can speak for myself, would have taken 3-2 and two through five games, or at least expected that was most likely. But they got there in a different way than I think people expected, and that helped change expectations. Yeah, because I think we saw uh, expectations rise, confidence rise, excitement rise, especially because they – not only because they started 3-0, but just – Probably the element of what it also provided, that win on the road in an SEC environment, kind of that marquee non-conference thing that Kansas State just hadn't been capitalizing on right. it for a number of years. They capitalized on it this year. Um, now you got you probably people think, you know, the expectations rose in that after that uh, three-game start, and now you probably have people jumping off a cliff and saying it's a fluke. I'm guessing it's probably somewhere in the middle of those two. Right, I would feel the same. Now, I'm not going to try to turn the narrative and make excuses for this program because they're not going to do that either. But if we go back to you know May, June, July, and we tell each other, hey, this offense will lose Hunter Rise and Isaiah Zuber, Malik Knowles, and Jordan Brown and not have them at this point of the year, we'll think, man, it's going to be pretty rough. That's what K-State's dealing with right now. Is the offense K-State has what they're going to be until they add more playmakers back, or do you have hope this group can get better over the course of the season? I, I have hope that it can get better because even – Though they are limited, they still have enough guys at running back where I don't think that's an issue right now. Yeah. And I think they're getting great play from James Gilbert. And he had Almost another, 100 yards again today. Yeah. yeah, so I think they're getting great play from him. Receivers, the reason why I think still you got to look at this, the arrow pointing upward, is that at least three or four of these guys that are playing are actually freshmen. Right. Philip Brooks is a freshman. Joshua Youngblood is a freshman. Landry Weber is only a sophomore. He played today. Um, Shabaston Taylor hasn't played a whole lot. So there's still a lot of inexperience at the receiver position. And I think it would be naive to not to think that they're going to get better as the season goes on. And I, I think you're starting to see that. Philip Brooks was today's leading receiver. Yep. Uh, not only was he the leading receiver, he had two great third down grabs in, uh, when the game was still you know, in the balance. And even Dalton Schoen, he, he's uh, – Two really tough catches today that I don't know if he makes a year ago. So I think they're already showing some development. One unit we haven't talked a lot about, at least in a critical sense, but I want to ask you about is the offensive line. Again, I don't think they were terrible today. It's hard to be terrible when you have a back like James Gilbert averages over five yards a carry, gets right around 100 yards. But Skylar Thompson sacked six times, a number of those on three-man rushes without any blitz, without any pressure coming. Was that unit concerning to you today or just a one-game blip? Uh, I, I'm a little bit concerned by that unit because we also saw them probably not to play up to what my expectation would be for them when they were in Stillwater. Uh, and even in Mississippi State, I think that was kind of an uneven uh, game for this group. So I think you're starting to see a trend where you, 
you wonder what you, if what you saw against Nichols and Bowling Green is what they are going to be. So they need to bounce back. They need to kind of impose their will, so to speak. Uh, we got some music now. I guess so, yeah. But uh, I, they're just so uneven right now. And maybe consistency, when Chris Kleiman's talking about consistency, when this locker room's only talking about consistency, yeah. it's probably this group is a, the epitome of that. I would agree. Let's flip sides the defense. I thought – the defense, for the most part, was pretty good today. You'll give up plays in a Big 12 game at any point. Right. I think until the missed tackles on third and 22 and the late John Lovett touchdown run of 43 yards out, they'd probably been pretty good. Yep. How did you feel the defense up till that point? Up until that point, you know, they, they were passing the test once again, so I, I still love what they have on defense. Love maybe is a strong word, but they're still passing the test, and they're still uh, doing enough for wins. You give up 26 to Oklahoma State, you probably feel good enough to win that game before – it got real funky in the fourth quarter. You, it, against Baylor, that point total that they were going to give up before that, you probably right. feel like you're good enough to win that game. The disappointment to me was the fourth quarter where they started to let things go. That was probably what I was most critical of last year, and you saw that pop up. So they have to really bounce back. So you hope they're not reverting back to uh, old habits. I don't want to overreact to one loss, just like we shouldn't to wins. A lot of winnable games left in the schedule. But talking about this defense, Derek, and something I think you said to me when we were just talking around, it may be a unit that once in a while is going to have to provide a pick six, a tip ball interception, a game-changing play to get this offense going. Because as good as the defense has been, the last couple of weeks it did force a couple of turnovers against Oklahoma State. But none of these that are putting the team in great field position, is that what this team needs now is a spark from defense, special teams, something like that to make it easy on the offense? Yeah, I mean, you can make the argument that the, the special teams sudden play from Malik Knowles yeah. against Mississippi State probably sure. won, won that game. So I think they're going to need that. They're going to need some kind of reinforcement. Jonathan Alexander already has a defensive touchdown this year. But you can't bank on that at each and every game. Right. Uh, that's something that's a little rare. So that's probably where they are at right now, that they have to rely on that. And that's probably why you're going to see some of these outcomes this year. But you just look across the sideline. I wanted to get this in. Matt Rolls first year, 1-11. Right. So you get a little bit, and now they're 5-0. So you see that building a program or rebuilding a program or putting the pieces together, even in first year, is going to be extremely challenging. It does take time. It's something we expected. I think even I got guilty of saying, well, maybe this is sped up because of what's happened early in the season. And it's probably more like what we thought it was coming into the year. Jump the shark. You talk about building a program. I don't want you to give away too much. because, Of course, we love your subscriptions on K-State Online. But a number of recruits here today, you have committed kids, you have non-committed kids, you have 2021 kids. Just would be a taste for the watchers of the KSO Sunday Show of what you saw on the sideline and what they can read for recruiting coverage the next week or so at KSO. Yeah, yeah, the four commits were on a sideline uh, taking their official visit this yep. weekend, really. And Jalen Travis, the receiver, I'm trying to remember all these names. Christian Sa Moore. Christian Moore, the H back. Safety, Malachi Mitchell, and running back, Deuce Vaughn. That's, that's the that's one all you four. have to remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's uh, Tony's stuff will be unofficial. Uh, though, but stuff yeah. will be on the unofficial. Another commit. So there are actually five commits in town. A four-star prospect from the 2021 class was here, and he looks really good on the hoof. So uh, that's you know optimistic, and you know plenty of other 2021 prospects. And, and there'll be even bigger weekends coming up in two or three weeks when they host Baylor in Oklahoma. No doubt about it. Frustrating or time TCU. for uh, yeah <laughs> TCU in Oklahoma. Frustrating time for a K State fan. You've lost two straight after a great three and zero start. I understand it's frustrating. But like Derek said, there was a great list of recruits here today. K-State's going to have a, an off week, not a bye week in my opinion, and then play TCU next week with a chance to go to 4-2. and two. As bad as things feel right now, it could feel much different two weeks from now. It could. It could feel great two weeks from now. Uh, it's we, We're guilty of jumping the shark. Absolutely. But there's, there's still good things to take from today's performance, and there's bad things. And it's not. I don't think they're going to lose the rest of their games. I don't think anyone right. on this set thinks they're going to lose the rest of the games. And you have growing pains with the new staff. I saw still even glimpses of the offense today, and I probably was ignoring those signs earlier in the season of them still learning this system because just the fitting and the timing and the chemistry isn't there. You have guys tripping over their own men. So they're still learning the scheme and still trying to figure out the little crevices and the little intricacies of it. Absolutely. It will be a process, of course, for K-State, but a lot of games left to do with this year and hopefully get better at it. That's going to wrap us up from inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. I want to say thanks again to People State Bank and Legacy Insurance for making this show possible and sponsoring the KSO Sunday Show. Thank you to Grant Flanders behind the microphone. I appreciate Derek Young and his insight. And even after a loss, you can still tell your friends.